Well, I don't we don't have an agenda for this. We don't. I don't know how this works. When we open All right, so this is a study session, so I'm, I don't have an agenda or anything for it. So I think it's this is primarily up yeah, to staff. Yeah. Oh. oh. That's a study. We do have an agenda for it. Is this? Roll call. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Pretty brief. Yeah. All right. Uh, I call to order the Planning Commission uh, Subdivision Committee special meeting, uh, February 27th. Uh, can I have a roll call? Chair Riley? Here. Vice Chair Sofokanik? Here. Commissioner Andre? Here. Commissioner Quilty? Absent. Commissioner DeBolt? Here. Commissioner Gross? Here. And Commissioner Lowe? Here. Um, and that takes us to uh, the purpose of this meeting, which is the discussion uh, study session for the zoning code update. Could I? Oh, just have a quick. Yeah, I think a, uh, a quick comment. Uh, I know it's a study session. If it's agreeable that we could open it for a public comment, uh, we've got an individual here I ran into at the Ganal Lumber, and uh, had a question. We're just talking about uh, uh, some uses in the in the residential neighborhoods. He had a question or a comment. And I said, be better just maybe to come into this meeting, and just lay it out a little bit. We can't discuss it, but at least throw it out here. And then from there, we can go, you know, rather than come to a regular meeting and uh, don't mind. Just OK, so I guess that's a question for staff or for the city attorney. Is there any issue with there's no issue. You can certainly take a public comment in advance of the presentation if you'd like. OK, great. Good. So if you would like to step forward, um, state your name and share with us your comments. Hi, uh, my name's Rob Stevens. Um, live on Bunker Hill in uh, Courier Row. Um, what I would like to do is add an additional uh, approach. Um, probably, let's see, I moved in in 71. Um, probably in the mid 80s, I put a pad on the one side to match the driveway with the brick ribbons. And I'd like to uh, get the car off the street and up there. Um, I just I just worry about it being on the street. When I'm working on the cars in the garage, I kind of just move them out. And it's nice to be able to get it off the street and park it on the other pad. Um, it'd just be more convenient to get it up and down and actually to code if it had an approach and a curb cut. Um, there's several in the area. In fact, there's one right across the street. I took some pictures. I have a picture of the front of the house. Um, right now, um, when we moved in, the fire hydrants were on the other side of the street. And then when they redid the main, the water main, they put it on our side, just on the neighbor's side. So now that area is a red curb anyway in front of that where I'd like to put the approach. So I wouldn't be taking up any extra like street parking. Um, I guess in our area there's been a problem with other people parking in front of other people's houses. We don't have that on our street, but um, in watching that next door, there's, I guess there's been a problem, but that's all I've been after is to uh, get another approach to the existing. Uh, Currie Row's unique. Um, they're wider lots, they're bigger lots. So there's plenty of room. Um, and I thought that would fall under what you guys are discussing. Okay. All right. Okay. I've got pictures, but you want to see them, or no? No, you don't need no, them. Not or? really. I don't think at this yeah. point. But I, 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 I had mentioned. I said we can't really discuss it, but maybe we can uh, have staff maybe put s just a discussion in general on one of our future agendas. In the meantime, they can get with the staff, and who knows? Maybe get something yeah. going that way. So you can. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys. Sure. <clears throat> All right, so that brings it uh, back to staff and our consultant. Or Mr. Chairman, staff. commission members, <laughs> uh, we are uh, scheduled here to have uh, uh, another study session to talk about uh, our zoning code update. And uh, we have a brief amount of time available. Uh, so I want to make sure we get right into it. But I wanted to mention to you uh, very quickly that this is really our last uh, scheduled uh, study session with the consultant team. We'll see how it transpires tonight and how we progress. Uh, we could add another one if need be, but we can discuss that maybe towards the end of, of uh, this time we have until six o'clock. But 
Uh, we're hopeful that uh, we can get some constructive feedback from you uh, this evening and uh, that the consultant team could take that and uh, we're prepared uh, to bring something back to you in March if everything goes well for a more formal uh, consideration. Uh, and with that, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, Laura Setson and uh, Jose Rodriguez. I'm missing. I, I'm Laura, that's Jose. Yes, yes sorry. <laughs> uh, but uh, Laura and, and Jose have been working very, very hard on this. And, uh, and uh, so with that, uh, I'll pass it off to Laura to, to take you through this. Thank you. Thank you, Les, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Um, we're finding this very helpful to sit with you, and we hope you uh, do as well in, the, in a much less formal setting. And we've got the meat, essentially, of the code tonight to talk about. It's the zones, the uses that are allowed in each zones and the development regulations for each zone. You were provided, I think, last Thursday or Friday, both a draft of what is called Article 2 for the zones, as well as the accompanying definitions section, because it, it helps when you're looking at the table of uses to understand what the uses are as described. So I hope you've had a chance to look through that. If not, we're here to, to answer any particular questions you have this evening. Um, as I mentioned, Article 2 is really what most people look at when they're going to look at the zoning code because they want to know what they can do in the zone or conversely, if they have a use, what zone that use is permitted in. And then also, what are the development standards that apply to that? What are the heights, setbacks, lot coverage, all those things that really indicate um, how, how a lot can be built, including as the gentleman raised this evening in the R1 zone, perhaps what the front, front yard coverage could be or in the case, it sounds like he probably also wants to put an additional driveway in at curb cut and less that may be regulated by other things that might be in the, the traffic code, not just in the zoning code. So um, I'm not prepared to respond completely right. to this evening, but I just I did want to bring that up. Uh, and as we go through the study session this evening, Jose will be chiming in with answers to questions. So this is fairly informal. So if, if you'd like us to stop at any point in time, um, please do, but I'll get through the brief presentation and then we'll hop into what I'll call the use table and also the development standards table. But big picture items, what has happened um, and what's proposed as part of the zoning code update is to eliminate the light uh, or the limited industrial zone. We've had conversations in the past that it's very similar to your, your business park zone and really the only distinguishing characteristic largely was whether or not commercial recreational uses were, would be permitted in one zone or the other. We had conversations with the ad hoc committee about this. We had a study session with the planning commission about it and the direction was that since those commercial recreational uses are regulated by a conditional use permit anyway, the, the city has the discretion to look at those on a case by case basis and determine whether or not a proposed location is appropriate. So um, in light of that, there is going to be only one um, industrial zone proposed as part of the code update. There will be a new zone as well, the town center mixed use zone. This is proposed to implement a category that was adopted in the general plan a number of years ago to allow for more of a um, urban center, if you will, not tall rise buildings, but something that allows for a mix of uses and creates a very much more pedestrian environment along parts of um, Los Alamitos and, and Catella, really at the, the core, the commercial core of the city. So the key changes with regard to uses that are proposed for the code update is to really reflect more modern uses of land. I, the, the prior code had long lists of things that could be regulated and rather than try to list a bunch of uses and, and I think we're all aware that how people use property changes over time and, and how uses evolve. It's easier to, to create more generic categories of uses as long as they're well described. So the two key types of uses in the commercial um, designations are commercial uh, limited and commercial general. And so there are, because these are commercial zones, a lot of uses sh uh, are proposed to be permitted by right. Those that are probably require a little bit more discretion, things like tattoo parlors or massage parlors would be subject to a conditional use permit. So you've got two types of commercial uses regulated a little bit differently. Also, there has been an expansion of the types of uses that would require an administrative use permit instead of a conditional use permit. So that would be staff level rather than planning commission level thing. And, excuse me, just a moment. 
um, th that's something that would be a little less expensive and much more uh, timely for an applicant to get. It, they would be uses that really wouldn't require the full public hearing and, and discretion of the Planning Commission. So anywhere you see an AUP in the use table, those were things that would be at a staff level. In the code, it does say that the director has at any time the ability to kick, kick something up to the Planning Commission, even if it's in his or her purview, if he or she feels that it's important that it be before the Planning Commission rather than a director level, it can be pushed up to the Planning Commission at the director's discretion. That's something that um, is in the code today, and it's certainly carried forward and is important to consider. The property development standards have also been tweaked. We, we wanted to be careful not to change development standards to any large degree because you have things that have been built to code with specific setbacks and building heights and it's important not to create non-conforming uses or non-conforming conditions by changing development standards. So there really hasn't been too much change in the property development standards. Um, what we've done is we've tweaked things that were just completely unclear, particularly in the R2 zone. Um, there was a an adjusted um, height requirement in both the R2 and R3, I think, as well. Let me look that up real fast, because I think this is an important change, and this would be on page... Um, 2-9. Thank you, Jose. 2-9 in the table, where it indicates that there is a maximum height of 35 feet and three stories, both in the, um, well, pr primarily in the R2 zone. And so if anything is, is in excess of 25 feet adjacent to a single family residential zone, it requires additional setback. So you can go to 35 feet, but only if the building's pushed back another five feet or so from, from the property line, just to create a little bit more buffer, if you will, between um, multifamily and single family zones. So, and, and that's different than today. A building can go up to 35 feet without any additional setback. Is, is the R1 zone 30 feet, though? The R1 zone is still 30 feet. I wonder why, why would it be different? Why would it be 25 for R2? I mean, if R1 could be next to an R1 at 30 feet, why would an R2 not be able to be 30 feet next to an R1? That's a good question. And, <laughs> and, and maybe the question is, is the 30 feet in R1 working for everybody pretty well? <coughs> and, and it's not number of stories, it's 30 feet. And if somebody could squeeze in three stories and 30 feet, they would be able to do that today within the R1 zone. So that's probably a, a good discussion point as well. The outdoor uh, open space requirements in the multifamily zones has also been adjusted to uh, make sure that there, at least in the R2 zone, that there is both private and common open space. And those standards uh, are on page 2-10 of the, of the draft language. And there's been a minimum standard just to make sure that people aren't trying to squeeze in unusable open space for your multifamily housing, that it has to measure at least 20 by 20. So it's not an afterthought. It's something that's actually integrated and thought into any development proposal to have some open space that, that's going to function as a play lot or a, um, a community gathering area for the, for the residents of that development. In the commercial standards, there have been a, um, not too many changes except in the PM zone. Currently in your PM zone, there's a, a strange requirement for a 50-foot setback if you face an arterial street that's across the street from a residential zone. So you've got residential zone, a wide street, and then another requirement for a 50-foot setback. And talking to staff about it, we uh, um, actually had a working session with staff a couple of weeks ago and went through all kinds of permutations and thought that seems like an awfully big setback. And we even looked through aerial photos as where it's been applied and what you have is a lot of unused space in, in the industrial zones that might be put to better use. Um, certainly, you know, it's nice to have a big 50-foot setback, but um, as, as properties development over time, it, there's probably not a need for that much setback when it's fronting an arterial street. So there is a, a proposal that that, and this is on page 2-21. Do we have places, do we have properties residential on arterials? That Across the street from commercial? Yes, we do. There's uh, uh, sur uh, what's it? Cerritos, I guess. Okay, Cerritos, um, right? yeah, around you've in that area. You've got that environment. And when we looked at, we actually looked at Cerritos in particular, and it just, 
it seems excessive when you've got anywhere from 80 to 100 feet of separation already in place because of the mm -hmm. of the street plus a setback of the of the residence which is usually 25 to 30 feet now you're adding 50 more feet to that industrial building so you're end up you're ending up with 175 plus feet of separation which we were questioning why is that necessary uh, when the street itself is providing not only separation but it also is um, you know, if there's noise or whatever, the, the street's probably going to be more uh, of a contributor than... What's the current setback without a... Current setback's 50. 50 I, I mean without, if it weren't across from residential. Uh, what do we... Uh, let's see. 15. 15. 15, all right, okay. And so the proposal is that if it's abutting a residential zone, or um, that it would be 40 feet. And that's at, you know immediately adjacent. So there, there's no requirement with regard to um, what type of, of street it's on. There's a 10-foot setback if it's adjacent to a commercial or another industrial property. But if it's uh, abutting a residential, it's a 40-foot setback. All right. Okay. So we've taken the, the street out of the mix, but still had some fairly uh, you know pretty good setback for you where you have industrial um, and residential interface. Also for the commercial zones and for the, indust the one industrial zone, the city currently has a lot coverage requirement. The general plan imposes also a floor area ratio requirement and we felt that that was overkill to have both lot coverage and an FAR. So the proposal is to eliminate the, the partial coverage, the lot coverage and just have the floor area ratio and setbacks and requirements for parking areas really dictate how the site's developed. And the, the, the floor area ratios are, are fairly generous. It's a 1.5 for your commercial office zone, one for the commercial general, and for the in, uh, PM, the industrial zone, it's a 1.5 FAR. And my guess is for the industrial, just because of the, um, I, I can't imagine that that would be, be achieved in a, an industrial zone. That's a, a pretty generous floor area ratio. And with that, I, I uh, Mr. Chairman, wanted to leave it pretty much open at, for, for discussion if pr uh, particular commissioners had questions, like the very good question that uh, Commissioner Lowe just raised. Um, otherwise, we can just start to look through the, the use tables and see if anybody has any questions, uh, starting with residential and then move on to residential development standards and then do the same for the other zones. I don't think um, there will be as many questions on, on the overlay zones, but you might have questions about the, the town center mixed use zone as well. And, and just a quick note on the town center mixed use zone, as I mentioned in the introductory statements, the, the goal per the general plan is really to, to allow for an uh, a, a pedestrian type environment and to create some more activity along the front edges. And so there are, there are restrictions on office uses proposed in the town center mixed use zone that you can't put all office uses along the ground floor, largely because those close up at five o'clock at night and might not be open on weekends and that's not the type of environment that you want. You want something that's a little more, not 24 seven, I don't think anybody wants a 24 seven environment, but certainly something that's a little more active into the evening and on weekends. Okay, I had a couple questions. Mm -hmm. um, to start, so along the lines of what Commissioner Lope mentioned um, with the, the heights in the different zones, uh, I see in the R3 zone it says three stories slash 35 feet. Why do we care how many stories it is? Uh, this is a carryover from the current code and probably you don't other than the fact that um, you know, maybe you're just looking at the, the massing of the building and, and when you add additional stories, it just looks more massive sometimes because it's, it's you, you've got additional stories. Um, but a lot of cities are foregoing stories and just indicating height, just like we've got for the R1 and R2 zones. So there's mm -hmm. no magic reason other than that it's a carryover. With 35 feet, a uh, developer might be hard pressed to get four stories in. Um, but again, that, that would be the, the commission's prerogative to eliminate the number of stories. Okay. I think that's just kind of a discussion item because mm -hmm. I think it, it depends on what we're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm I just I'm good for elimination. You brought it up. Do what? I'm good for elimination. Elimination of, of the, the stories. Of the just stories. Just, just having it be a height limitation. 
And keeping it at 35, but keeping it at 35 feet. Correct. Now, does that then allow an extra of so many feet for uh, equipment and stuff like that? Um, it, is that is that included? The 35 is included in that. Um, usually, elevator shafts are not included or any oh, rooftop equipment. appurtenances. Uh, so, so in theory, they could go to 40 feet then. If they've got rooftop mounted equipment, they could. And is this the uh, height above grade? So, yes. Yes. Okay. The only thing that I would be concerned about is where we're going to see this is going to be in the apartment areas. Okay, and if you if you go look at the two that are currently under construction right now on uh, Farquhar, the two that we approved uh, next to each other. Uh, I mean, I, I'm even, uh, I'm not liking even the, the third story. We, we would have a wall of buildings going, you know, eventually. I mean, it's to just, if you can just expand that look, you know, it's, uh, I mean, of course, this will be years ahead. I mean, but as properties are repurposed, but you, you're literally going to have a wall along there. And I, so I, I you know, 30 feet, right now we're at 30 plus, plus the five, you know, for the, for the rooftop setback. I think that's adequate if we're going to, you know, I, I would almost like to see two stories, frankly, you know, in, in these multifamily areas, if just simply to preserve the look. I, I, I mean, that's... I think that might be difficult from a standpoint of new housing legislation that's come forward that says if your general plan says you can build up to 30 units per acre and your zoning code doesn't have standards that allow a developer to do that, um, that you, you could be challenged on that. And it's with the only way to accomplish it. Is, is to go up to three stories. Right. So you yeah. leave it... You eliminate the stories and just leave the, or or, or you're limited even, to no more than three. Then, or even um, if you had a height, for example, if you had the height at 25 feet and allowed 30 units per acre, I think somebody could make a pretty good argument that you can't get 30 units per acre within that limit. Right, and you'd have an inconsistency between what the general plan allows and what the zoning and a developer is able to default to the general plan. One item too, but, but that's a maximum, right? The, the 30 per acre is a maximum, not a, not a. I, I, I'm looking at the city attorney, but I think you'd probably still uh, be challengeable if you have development standards that don't allow somebody to achieve what the general plan says they could achieve. Particularly if you've got a unit, um, there's a 30 DU per acre limit in the R3 zone as well if the one of the concerns is having to do with aesthetics again I, it, it was briefly mentioned but there is a, a note here <clears throat> that's currently not in our code and that is if the structures go higher than 25 feet in height that an additional five foot setback side yard setbacks required right. so as that structure is going vertical, they need to step, have it to step it back. So, which is yeah. what we're not seeing right now. Right, right. So, I think that's going to pro uh, provide some relief from that canyon right. okay. effect that can occur between structures, as well as the disparity that can occur. But somebody may be perfectly happy with that single family home and not want three stories at, right at that five foot setback right up against them. Uh, the five feet is what we came up with. If right. the commission feels maybe it should step back a little bit further. Um, we're certainly open to hearing that. Well, that's stepping back on on both on the front and the side. You were just bring. This is a side yard setback provision only, so but not a front setback. Right, because the side yard is so narrow, and the right. thought is if you have two structures right next to each other that right. are both going towards right. feet in height, at least you're you're in that design going to have to push that uh, that portion of the building above 25 feet back. Um, Again, the five feet is just a subjective number we threw out. Uh, I've seen uh, a little bit further of a setback because then that third floor that gets established or possibly, you know, maybe it's a, a portion of a townhouse. Right. Then you get some usable space. That might end up being a little outdoor, um, you know, balcony uh, type setting for someone. But, but the whole idea there is to, again, try and minimize 
the potential of, of that canyon effect that occurs with two tall buildings right next to each other. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to keep the, if we're going to el eliminate, then I like that idea that we at least have them have them go in as as they get above. All right, the twenty five feet with the five. That's that's already in there. Yes. Yeah. We put all right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, that's fine then. On the uh, R three, it's that we need to put in the number one in there. I don't know if you've right. noticed yeah, that, we Laura. Need to put the, the okay. Yeah. And then eliminate the three stories. I, I'm just looking I, for like. You know, yeah, no, I, I like that. If we're going to go with the height, I, I mean, I, I don't want to get afoul of the, the, you know, in, the inconsistency. So yeah, so just make it the height. If they can, just they have a way of squeezing them in. You know, it's just. Uh, <laughs> They'll try. Um, I'd like to return to Commissioner sure. Coe's question about why 25 feet in the R2 and, and 30 in the, the R1. I think in the R1, you, you'd have a case where um, you might have buildings already in a neighborhood that are th two stories, 30 feet high. And so if somebody's coming in with a similar building, it's consistent with the neighborhood. I think in the case of the interface for a multifamily building, it's usually going to be bulkier than a single family home. Just because it's bigger, and so that's why the additional setback kicks in at 25 feet rather than 30, just be, because of the character of the neighborhood of a single family versus that interface issue. But you're not going three stories in the, in the R1. You're going 30 feet. If somebody wanted to build um, three 10-story floors, they, they could. That's a possibility in the R1 zone. I think I'd limit the R1 to two stories, just for. Is what has it been historically? Is it thirty feet? Thirty feet. Thirty feet. Thirty feet in two stories, or is thirty feet do whatever you want to do. Tom's looking at the current code. I mean, the condos are all in the R, R, you know, two or three zones, so I'm not too worried about, you know, that. Yeah, 30 feet is what it's historically been. I know, but is it two stories? Do we have just, a... No, it doesn't say two stories. Oh? Yeah. Hmm? Page 2-9. So we, we, we've kept it what it is today, no limit on stories for single family. I think we should limit it to two stories. So to, three, to what end? To what end? Just so it, we keep it at two stories, or thirty well, feet. It hasn't been thirty at feet. Two stories. It's just been at thirty feet. I don't know. But what what are we trying to accomplish by limiting? Because because from an outside perspective, aside from you know windows, some aesthetic things, um, you know, if you're if you're next to a thirty foot two story house or next to a thirty foot three story house, bedroom count, parking, we only require two spaces. Uh, is that still true? It's we true. updated parking. Not in the R1. Another controlling factor is the, the lot coverage of 50% in the R1. So that's mm -hmm. going to limit the size of the house somewhat. Yeah, but they still go vertical, right? If they can squeeze more within the 30 foot height limit. I mean, it just seems we're going, you know, who would have thought we could get what we're getting in the R3? You know, you get the creative, I mean, that's one thing. The R1's a little different. I mean, now you're right close to home. I'm just, you know, I'm just thinking just in general. I mean, pre preservation of neighborhoods. I mean, it, it's, be that one guy who wants to build the monstrosity in the neighborhood that doesn't fit. <laughs> I'm not, I, I guess I'm not looking that way. No. <laughs> <laughs> what, what we're looking for tonight is if there are any, any you know, proposed change that the um, commission would like to make in the this administrative draft, it would be put into the draft that goes through the public hearing process. Right, so that, right. that's... I'd like to just... Yeah. We just if it's never been two stories... We haven't had the problem. Let's just make sure we don't have the problem. I should just say limit to two stories. I mean, it's... I'm good with leaving it the way it is. I don't want to change it to... It's been, it's been okay with uh, the height limit and not the restriction on the 
I'd rather keep it the way it is. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do you want a straw vote on? I think it, is that okay, uh, Mr. City Attorney Mike Finkel, to do that? Yeah, okay. yeah I think yeah. if get there is an issue here, we should get some consensus in terms of the direction they want to provide. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm inclined to just have it be a, a height limitation and not be concerned about the number of stories. Um, that's, uh, I, I so see both sides, not. and I agree with both sides, but if at 30 feet, if they put three stories in, it's still 30 feet. Even if it's I, I, two I stories, it's still 30 feet. I understand that. So it's not going to change the outside look so much. I'm inclined to leave it yeah. the way it is. Yeah. Okay, that's, so. that's, 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 that's it. That's good. All right. Okay. Um, one thing that I'm not seeing in your current code, and we haven't proposed in the updated code, is to establish some type of front yard coverage standard, um, which I frequently see in, in other zoning codes to address the issue that, that the gentleman just brought up this evening. A, a lot of cities want to limit hardscape in a front yard um, for a number of reasons, uh, to allow groundwater to percolate because people have a tendency to park in paved areas if it, it's all in a front yard. Um, so I don't know if you wanted to address that either in response to the comment that's come up tonight or just generally to place a limit on hardscape in a, in a front yard setback area. Well, we have landscaping. Oh, we, have mm -hmm. we have We have landscape 50 requirements. Percent. Is it 50 yeah. percent? 50 percent. Okay. And then you have the strips on either side right. of the parcel right. as well. So that, that's a, as opposed to a hardscape, I think it's a landscape. landscape. It, it's the flip side. You have to have at least right. 50 percent front yard landscaping. Yeah. yeah. So I think, so we're covered there. Yeah. That's that, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Something else I, I that, and this, this is just something, I don't know why I thought of this, but it's, it's come up before. Um, where we have a conflict, where we have a, a business that comes in and they're wanting to come in under, under you know, one definition under the code, but perhaps um, it seems like maybe they should be under a different definition. And for a specific uh, kind of examples, we've had some um, fitness businesses come in and say that they're uh, like instructional um, services mm -hmm. that they qualify under instructional services because under instructional service case we have you know uh include classes or instruction in music fitness arts sports or academics right um and then we have health and fitness activities which are like gyms right but they also offer some classes and things like that and i think i'd like to figure out a way to address that so that we don't have because some of these places are they're they're gyms, but they just have classes where they do their gym stuff, right? Um, so how do we differentiate between that and, and, and where does that discretion lie? Does it lie with staff? Does it lie with the commission? Um, it lies first with, the, with staff, with the director. Well, actually, it lies first in um, asking them a lot of questions as to what it is they're actually doing. Yeah, and I don't want to just limit this just to that fitness thing, but any time that we have, mm -hmm. like, you know, somebody coming in and saying, no, I think I should be under this classification. No. How, how, do, how does that determination finally made? It's made by the director, and the director, if the director's uncomfortable making a decision, can refer it to the planning commission. So if, okay. if somebody comes in and, and the director says, no, I think you're actually Y, not X, based on how you've described the use to me, um, and if the a uh, person disagrees, they could bring that before the planning commission as well. So there, there's, uh, it starts with the director, but then both the director and the applicant have the ability to come forward and say, this is what I think I am, therefore I think I should be in, allowed in a particular zone. So the, it's a, we try to remove some of that discretion by having really solid definitions, but it starts by the person um, really working with staff to define what it is they're doing. Right, and, and I think that's the challenge. In that case where we had, you know, a, a fitness organization come in and, and make the case that they were instructional services, but all of their marketing material talked about getting in better shape and losing weight and getting a body you always dreamed of and all that stuff, which to me was like, hey, this is a, this is a gym, this is a health and fitness facility. But because they did that via classes, like scheduled classes, 
um, they were trying to come in under this under cla other classification. You, you know what I would do then, and I'm glad you brought that, that particular one up, because if you, if, if you look in the definitions on page 723 under instructional services, it does say fitness. And you could solve that, for example, by taking out the word fitness, so it's really focused on music, art, sports, or academics, because there's a definition for health slash fitness facilities, both small ones under 2,500 square feet or large ones. Right. So. Well, it, to make it trickier, I think the one that came in argued that they were also, it was a sport, because it was boxing activity, yeah. right? So, but, but again, it was all about getting in better shape and, right. and everything. So I'm just saying that there are times where it can be tricky, and how do we, how do we make those determinations? And, and I, I think, um, you, and you won't see that go away, but what you could do in instructional services is say, this, in particular, this does not include a health fitness facility or anything having to do with sports, so that those types of uses are defined to be a health facility mm -hmm. or health or fitness facility. And if I could add to this, I, I want to mention too that first of all, the definition that with the draft uh, that's before you with the definitions is much more comprehensive than what we currently have. Mm -hmm. So there's that factor. Uh, we're going to more clearly define, as Laura mentioned, that there would be the opportunity for the director to review that and, and make a determination or to uh, request that it go forward to the planning commission for that determination to be made. It's going to be much clear, much more clear, I think, going forward than it has been in the past as to how that uh, is to be uh, handled. Yeah. And, uh, I agree. As, as was mentioned, it really boils down to the questions that are asked up front, but it helps also when you've got uh, uh, much more clear definitions to use, uh, but we're always going to have uh, you, something that comes up that doesn't fit a definition that we're going right. to have to use. Right. Or, or even some of the language, like even over under health and fitness, it says aerobics classes. Oh, that's a class. You know, we're teaching you stuff. Right. We're, it's really a fitness activity, right? Exactly. So yep. it's, you know, there's just, that creates these gray areas that become challenging to navigate. Well, I think the notion of a class was it limits the number of people that are there. It's not so much as a class, it's, it's, it's just that the activity is limited to a well, finite for, number for rather me, than just coming and going. For me, instructional services would mean that you're, you're, you're being educated, you're being taught something that you don't already, already know, right? I, I would recommend not, that we... Not just something that you are, you're attending as a, as a, just like everybody but else. But if somebody you're doing, leading it, I mean, I don't, I mean, we all know how to do a jumping jack, but I guess if... You've got somebody setting the pace and the variety and the, of the different exercises that sure. you're doing. Is it a class if it's limited to, to 20 people, or is it if it just goes up? If it's well, just is it, come is and it, go, is it? I guess the argument to me would be: yeah. is it is it more a class or is it more a fitness activity? It's probably a hybrid. <laughs> Something. It's, 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 to me, it's a, a little, 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 little of both. Is, <laughs> Let him make know. the decision. It, it should just say maybe health promotion. Oh, you lost your. Game. Oh. And using the term health promotion. I, 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 what, what, what I would recommend is that we fix instructional services so we take out fitness and sports. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because then it seems much more passive um, for music, yeah. art, academics. It's, yeah, are you finding the material? Laura, that we, we would have to have add instructional services to the table. It looks like we don't have it currently. Yeah. Okay, table. Seven twenty-three. There's. I see that. Halfway that's not, down. Well, that's not a table. Seven twenty-three. But in um, what Jose is indicating is under service uses, we need to add instructional services back in. I think. Yeah, I'm not. So, I'm not sure if that's the right way to address it or not. Because I think that there. We can always address it later. That there there can be legitimate instructional things around sports. Right, yeah. Like, like we have an archery place over here and they're teaching people how to do archery, right? But that well, would be considered a private sport, lessons. Right? I mean you have lessons. Yeah, so it's and just, you might have three or four in the class. It's just one of those difficult areas. So I don't know that that my question is so much about like, hey, let's change this and solve the problem now because I don't know that that's gonna be effective. But it's it's also about like when the problem does come up, how do we deal with it? He deals with it, and if he can't, then right. he kicks it up to us. Okay. And then we agonize and right. say, we got to fix it. And we let you deal with it. <laughs> well, you can't, you can't fix it, right? Because right. sometimes, I mean, just, sometimes yeah. they're both yeah. true, and you just have to kind of yeah. go, okay, which one is more, right. is more true? And, and, and I think the key concern 
is are they providing enough parking and is it in a, right. an appropriate location if, right, if it, right. particularly if it's involving uh, mostly kids and is it in a, in a safe location good question Th those were just a couple things I had off the top of my head so right. if anyone else has anything I have a bunch but that's okay Oh, I mean, just are comments. You, we're not at that point yet, are we? With, sure, yes. through the yeah. table? Mm -hmm. We are. Uh, we are well, did, did we want to go through everything in order, or do you have things? I'm okay. I mean, I have, I got just questions and stuff, you know, that, like multifamily. There's a question between multifamily, multiple family. Are we using, what are we using? We, uh, we had a last minute switch, and so we may not have caught them all, but I think we're using multiple family, Jose. Oh. Multiple family multiple versus multifamily? Right, because it, we're, we're trying to parallel the general plan language. Okay, because I, it's not consistent all the way through. So if you haven't done, if you're, you're going to make that consistent, right? Right. All right, okay, that, that was the one thing. Uh, on uh, the daycare, on page 2-8, uh, you're deleting child daycare. The, the, the description of daycare in the... Uh, why? I guess that's my question is why, why are we? Because there's also adult daycare, and so we're just using the generic term daycare. When you get into the apartment area, let me just raise a question because mm -hmm. I get my apartment magazines and I'm reading stuff about, you know, prohibitions and stuff like this, what we can do and can't do. Uh, so if somebody rents an apartment and wants to set up daycare, child daycare, we can't, we can't restrict that. Okay, as a landlord, if they, somebody wants to do it, they can they can set up a daycare. We can't require insurance either. What about adult? But if you change, but do I want adult daycare in an apartment in the R three? Not really. And I think that I could probably restrict that. Probably, I'm not without calling it. I guess the question is, I, I, why, um, why, the, why, why, are we, why are we taking out child daycare? And, and, and if somebody wants to come in and set up an adult daycare, then um, I, I would think that would have to, now we're getting into group homes, we're getting into all of this stuff again. I mean, are we? That's, um, I'm, I'm curious. I'd, I'd like to explore with you separately about the the daycare and and not being able to allow it because my understanding is under California law, um, there are really three types of daycare. There's small family daycare, which is six or fewer, which the city cannot regulate in um, a single family zone. There's large family daycare, which is up to 12. That it the number fluctuates a little bit depending on the age of the kids. The city also cannot. Um, restrict those in single-family zones. I do believe you can do it in multi-family zones. Um, but, you, you bet you got them as permitted. Hold, family hold, hold on. And then there, and then there's commercial daycare. So that would be a daycare facility that would have more than 12 children or adults, and that is a commercial use of property, considered to be more of a commercial use of property. So it's not a family daycare. There's a difference between family daycare and <clears throat> commercial daycare. Well, what's a family daycare home in, in the R3 zone, permitted by right? I've got, I've got 10 units. i got somebody who wants to come in and turn in. He wants to rent an apartment. and If they have, have a single family home in the R3 zone, and, and maybe it, and we probably need to clarify it in the table because it's only if you're in a single family home, not in a it says, apartment. It says that here it's for same. R2 and R3. It says single family dwelling. Only permitted in single family. Only permitted dwelling. in a single family dwelling. All right. And, and also for clarification, too, under the definition, we have family daycare home as only being for children, but a daycare center is the one that would allow for All right. adults or okay. children. Yeah. All right. But the daycare homes are only for children. Okay. Um, the other, I just started ripping things out. Okay, so then uh, on page 
2-15. Uh, we're getting into, this has to do with um, office business professional halfway down, deleted 15. Right now we limit uh, uh, in the retail zones, 15, we limit the non-retail uses or you know on the ground floor to no more than 15%. We're changing that to 33. We just turned down a, we just turned down a medical office for the same reason in our retail zone, in our CG zone. This no, would be no. for non-medical office. Well, it's also farther back too. Again, hang on. yeah, for non-med. Okay, for. Uh, medical and dental offices are treated differently than business and professional offices, and they would not be um, well, fall under the fifteen percent. Is that what you're saying? I think that I think we need to limit in our in our retail in our retail zones on the ground floor. We have a limitation of fifteen percent, and if we need to, my thinking was has been for non for a non retail use mm -hmm. without calling out medical or whatever, just a non-retail use. The thinking behind that is, is that the, not to have retail spaces sit vacant to create a little bit more flexibility to allow the office. It, if, it in, um, if it were a medical or dental office, it would, re, it would require a um, conditional use permit for, for ground floor frontage in the commercial general zone. Well, I Okay, and then uh, and then we also have it on page two dash twenty six. Uh, same limitation. That's correct. For for non medical office, it would be allowed up to thirty three percent on the ground floor. I think we should leave it at 15. I mean, this is our retail zone. I mean, we got the city struggling to meet, to meet. Uh, at least what I'm reading in the paper. You know, we're going to go bankrupt. We have to increase revenue if we're going to, you know, sales tax and all that is part of the revenue stream. We allow non-retail uses in our retail zone. Uh, that's just the life. That that's just the. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, if the office sits empty, it sits empty. If, if the space sits empty, it sits empty. That's the joys of owning retail property. If you're a property owner, you've got to lease it out retail. As a city, they're looking for sales tax. The, the, you know, the landlord doesn't care where, where he gets his rent dollar. It's all the same, whether it's from a retail use or a non-retail use. You know, he, so from his perspective, there's no, you know, there's uh, a dollar's a dollar wherever I get it. From the city's perspective, if I'm putting my city hat on, I want to preserve my retail and my and my sales tax base. My, I mean, you're not you're not going to have sales tax if you lease all your retail space out to non-retail uses. That's my that's my opinion. I mean, uh, we just turned down a, we just turned down a medical office because they're what 28 percent ground floor or something like that. Uh, you know, you exceeded the 15 percent. And we yeah, said no at the last meeting. I mean, we approved this. They come, they come back. We turned them down yesterday, and we approved them today. I'm not, I'm not willing to give that up. I mean, I think that's – now, I, I, if I had my property owner hat on, landlord hat on, and I owned that building, I'd be in here saying, yeah, we, we need to make that 50%. You know, I, I – you know. it, it, it's, a, it's a policy yeah. call. So yeah, it, I, I we'll see. We'll take direction – I want to also clarify, too, that the way the code's currently written, as well as the way this is drafted right now, medical use is not under that 15% caveat. It is by, it's not by right. It's, it's by conditional use permit on a case-by-case -case basis. If the commission wants to see that included in whatever that percentage limitation is, we need to put that footnote under the medical portion, because right now that footnote's not there. So what, if you want to make sure that under because this is for what we're talking about is for non-medical and dental office space and that
current rating of 33%. Well, just take out the non-medical. I think it's anything other than a retail use shall shall be limited to no no more than 15%. Challenge is under the medical use section, it says that there's no right allowance by right allowance. It's only by conditional use permit. So my point is, under the medical portion of this, you'd want to if you want to conclude that in that maximum of 15%, we'd need to somehow note that. So you'd have a conditional well, use permit. Well, you're, you're trying to you, I thought, you're trying to go through and pull out every every single use. I'm just saying you have a blanket statement. If it's a non if it's a non retail use, it's prohibited, or it's limited to 15. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be medical. It can be. I think we're saying the same thing. Wait, I, I know. I know. But if if we're going to try to footnote every use, then we have if we miss one use because it's not footnoted, then somebody's going to well. This is an office use, but it's not, you know what I mean? I'm just saying if, if, if in that zone that ground floor, uh, non-retail uses on the ground floor, you know, shall not exceed 15% of the, of the floor area. I mean, it, it doesn't matter what use it is. If it's a non-retail use, it doesn't go in there. That can be a fitness on, on there, it can be a medical use, it can be a nail salon, well, nail salon might be, if we get retail, if we get sales, and maybe define that. I mean, what is, what are we looking for? Maybe it should be a non, well, a, a retail use, whatever the, whatever the definition of a retail use is that we have. And again, my, I think we're seeing the same oh, thing. The, my, however, we get to the same spot, just so we. I think it would be beneficial. I, as, as the one that is yeah, responsible right. to work with applicants that come in, uh -huh. having that footnote under the office, medical and dental office section that says it is subject to a maximum of 15%. That's fine. Helps us to be able to say that because right now the argument can be made, well, it's by conditional use permit. Right. So it's so up it, to the commission. And the, and the so reason, cumulative too. And the reason that's, that's, that's separate by CUP is because of the intensity of the use and Multiple reasons, yes. And Intensity of use, parking. Of and, and so, I mean, we could maintain the CUP for those uses, exactly. but it but would be under a, a limitation mm -hmm. in the retail. A 50, CUP, a 50, under no yeah. reason, under no yeah. circumstance, would, would you even be able to consider a CUP if the 15% threshold were, were triggered? Sure, because right. if we weren't going to consider another office use, why would we consider a medical, medical use correct. In, in that same space. Yeah. And that's right. the circumstance right. that we have. Right, Just so we, yeah. just so we preserve that. That's, that's my So are we going to The question we have, 15? that's the question Leave we have for the commission, to, to whether or not the proposal is to limit it to 15% or another number. 15, I think I agree. about to 15. Yeah, we're all there, okay. Um, I had just a, So, and we've just got four minutes left on this yeah. before we have to start the regular uh, meeting. Just. I know, just, no, let me just see, I'll skip that one. Uh. And Mr. Chairman, recognizing that we won't get through it all tonight unless it has made this. Well, we could go over just yeah. a little. Oh, well, we got people here, yeah. don't we? Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, a couple of meeting. suggestions that we can continue to another workshop study session um, and give you some more time to look at it and if you've got comments that you want to give us ahead of time we can come prepared with responses yeah I would be in favor of that okay. as long as it doesn't you know delay things I've got two more but I think it would be good I might both get through. I've only got it, it'll make the hearing process go really fast if we get it all taken care of through the study sessions then when it comes before you for hearing we've talked we will have talked about a lot of things already right so we'll, we'll work on scheduling. Yeah. What we'd like to do is, is recommend a separate date. We talked about this last meeting about the possibility of a, a separate special meeting date that is dedicated to this. Uh, we've been looking at our schedule, I believe the, the 12th or the 14th, which is either a Tuesday or a Thursday. Unfortunately, we can't do uh, Wednesday because of other meetings scheduled in this room, but we'd like to do one of those two dates uh, we could either do a six o'clock, six o'clock is what we prefer. Uh, okay, if we can make that work uh, and be able to come in, focus on this, and hopefully within you know a short turnaround time, be able to field okay. all of your 
comments, questions, and be in hopefully in a comfortable position to be able to finalize that draft and have it for you in a public hearing okay. after that. All right, sure. So if, I don't know if there's a, you know, we're catching you cold with those dates. We are, I think our initial preference was for the 14th uh, with the 12th as a backup on that. Um, of what, March? Yes. I'm good. What day is the week of those? Thursday, Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday. Wait a minute. I'm in Arizona on the 8th. It's going to be back in June. And as was mentioned too, we'd love to hear from you. Please don't wait till then. If you, we'd love to field your, uh, to receive your comments and have a chance to, you know, to uh, uh, digest that, if you will, or discuss it internally and, and be able to be prepared to respond to that when we meet next. I said it all me. Uh, I, I have a I have a standing Tuesday meeting every every Tuesday at from five to five thirty. So I, I might be able to make that work. I would just need to know. You said Thursday though, right? Uh, Tuesday. Yeah, that's Thursday the twelfth. Thursday so. the fourteenth. Yeah. Fourteenth works. This is May. what they're after. Okay. Yeah, I can. Okay. I think I can do we'll, that. We'll follow right. up with you tomorrow right. morning to confirm that with okay. all of you. But Right. At this point in time, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, focus on the 14th at 6 o'clock as okay. a special meeting and, and to go from there. So all right. thank you very much and for your input. As a reminder, also look at your emails, too, because we, we might send something to you that we need you to look at. Right. So look at your city email address if you can. Um, Tom, are we anticipating that we could probably get the um, landscaping parking chapter and signs to them for that meeting? Yeah. yeah. I, 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 yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know Tom's done his work. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Pressure. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so I guess with that, we'll adjourn the uh, subdivision committee meeting and move on. Chairman, do you want to take maybe a five minute? Mm -hmm. It's good. Whatever. Yes, no? Yes. Good. Yes. He'd like a five minute break. Oh.